everybody. Michael Lombardo here from Life Poured Out International. This is Awaken Live. Thank you so much for joining today. I'm going to quickly go to Facebook and I'm going to turn the privacy setting off so you can feel free to share this. All right. It's public. Good, good, good. Grace Casper, thank you so much for watching. I'm glad I can see the comments here at the bottom. I love when Awaken Live is interactive. So if you have a prayer request, if you're really just getting touched, tell us at the bottom. Let us know where you're watching from. It's always cool to see people watching from Africa, Asia, Australia, Europe, all over the place. So let us know where you're watching from. That's really cool. Say hi. You can share testimonies at the bottom. You can say all kinds of stuff. We just love to hear from you. So also right next to the comment section is a share button. You can click that so we can get that out to more people, which would be awesome. You can use hashtag Awaken Live as well. So I'm really excited to have my guest on the show today. Um, I just spent some time. I was at Voice of the Prophets only for the network gathering because I'm a part of Randy Clark's ministry, Global Awakening. So I went for the network advance, which is only open for people who are part of the, uh, a part of the network. But I was able to spend some time with Sean Cabot and Jane Campbell from Chosen Books, which I, I just love Sean so much. This is my first time getting to meet Jane. But Grace, hey Grace, how you doing? You know, I love everybody at Chosen Books, and um, so I'm just giving you guys a shout out. I've been able to have a lot of your authors on the show, which has been really enriching and amazing. So it's been really great. So I just want to say hi to those who just tuned in now. Hey, everybody, this is Awaken Live. My name is Michael Lombardo. In the status section, you'll see um, my guest, Erica Willis. You'll see that her website is on there, actually a link that you can click on, believeboldly.com. And you'll also see our website, lifeportoutintl.org, so you can access that at any point after the show. What's up, Sierra? How you doing? Good to see you, Sierra, because I also am an author. This is my book. Actually, I have it here. Might as well plug it. Immersed in His Glory with Destiny Image Publishers, and Sierra helped me a lot with that. She um, worked at Destiny Image for a long time. What's up, Sierra? Good to see you on here. But um, anyways, love saying hi to people. Thank you guys who have been tuning in. Faith, you guys are always watching and you're always posting and sharing. Really appreciate that. That is so cool. So no further ado, I don't want to take too much more time. I want to tell you about my guest today. Her name is Erica Willis, and I'm going to read to you a little bit of her bio. This is her new book, Believe Boldly. So I'm going to read to you her bio. She's the founder and director of The Fives, which is an international prayer ministry. She's a leader in the local church for more than 20 years. She teaches weekly in women's ministry at her church, New River Fellowship in Hudson Oaks, Texas. And she's a popular blogger and speaker. And you can find out more, like I said, the link above at believeboldly.com. So, Erica, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> Appreciate you taking time to just chat with me on Awaken Live. Yeah, sure. It's my pleasure. <laughs> All right. So for those who may not know, you know, much about you or your ministry, this is our first time hearing about you in your book. Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah. So uh, I just recently, I say recently, I've been in Texas three years, but you know, when you make a big move, it feels like it just happened. Um, I've been doing ministry uh, in this writing world for the past uh, three and a half years or so. Um, I'm married to my husband, Joey. He is a pastor at a local church and I have two kids, Tristan, he's nine and my daughter Reese is six. So um, this is the first year that they have both gone to school full time. Praise Jesus, because I get so much done. <laughs> including podcast interviews. See how great this is? And everything we can do live and uh, via technology is pretty incredible. So it's been fun uh, playing role uh, of the pastor's wife, as well as mom, as well as writer and blogger. So um, we have a really good time here. Um, love to encourage women in their walk with God. Um, that was the original intent of BelieveBoldly.com was to just connect ladies um, to dig deeper into their faith. And what we have found through prayer ministry and different avenues that God has opened, we have reached out to men as well. So it's been a really cool experience. And I feel like anytime you have a plan for what God wants for you, he always throws that out the window and gives you his own. So <laughs> here we are ministering to guys and girls, which is such a cool thing. <laughs> that is really cool. And so let me, I'm going to show people one more time. This is your book, Believe Boldly. When did this come out? Actually, let me read the subtitle, Believe Boldly. The Power of Simple, Confident Prayer to Unleash the Supernatural by Chosen Books. So can you tell us a little bit about this book and how, how it came about? 
Yeah, it's pretty incredible. Um, it was just released in February and it has been a, a, a labor of love for me um, and sometimes a labor of hate. <laughs> so when God called me to write a book, um, it was really the first the furthest thing from my mind. Um, like like you shared, I lead a, in a women's ministry. I've been a worship leader most of my life. Um, and I've always loved books, but I've never felt a call to be a writer. Um, and so when God said, hey, I need to start putting in words these things that I'm showing you, these things that I'm revealing to you, I thought, I think you're confused, God, because I, I sing, I don't write, and I speak, I don't write. And uh, so through that process of laying down my expectations and what I hoped to get from um, my walk with God, I was able to fully embrace this whole new book avenue, which has been pretty incredible, um, but completely unexpected. Yeah, absolutely. I know exactly what you mean. It's a, um, I feel like a student. I'm just learning all the time, you know, when it comes to just writing in general, because I hardly even graduated high school. You know, let alone, you know, been able to write a book. It's just a grace of God. He does things in our life that far exceed our natural talents and abilities to do. So he gets all the credit, right? He gets all the glory because it's just his spirit flowing through us. But I feel like I'm just like, I'm like, teach me. Like I call the guys a destiny image. I'm like, teach me. What could I do better? Like, I just want to know because it's a totally amazing adventure. I just love to learn. I know exactly what you're talking about. But um, so this book, Believe Boldly, this is this is a life journey for you. This is a life message. This isn't something that you just decided to study the word of God and say, this is, you know, a message that you just, you know, got, you know, revelation on. This is something you've lived. Absolutely. And in your first chapter, you talk about the difference between supers and normals, which is which is interesting. And you kind of weave it in with your own testimony. Can you tell us what that is? What's a super and what's a normal? Absolutely. So when I think about my walk with God and just my personality in general, I'm very type A. I like to be organized and planned ahead. I like to plan ahead of everything. Um, I like to have a calendar outlining everything. So my time with God always represented that same mindset. So I had my journal with my, if I'm going to pray for people. I have them listed so I can do the cute little check mark next to it so that I know that I've done my job. I have a certain Bible reading plan that I follow and God gets his time slot between, you know, when I wake up and when the kids get up and it's exactly 30 minutes and this is what it will look like and how it will feel and what it will sound like. And I ask God a question and he answers the question the way that I hope he will. And then we move on with our day. So for me, that's like normal Christianity, right? That's uh, normal American Christianity where we say, God, I would love for you to meet me in this way um, because this is how I'm most comfortable. So for me, that's normal Christianity. It's the basics of our faith. It's um, those beginning stages or should be the beginning stages because we should be progressing into what I call a super. Um, and by super, I mean the people that weirded me out so bad in the beginning, right? Because they're the people that tell stories about hearing God's voice, um, seeing a sunrise and getting revelation from God. They're the people that will stop and pray with someone in the middle of Walmart. Um, and I was like, oh, that's, mm, that's a little bit outside my comfort zone and it sounds a little crazy. And I don't know that I can trust a little bit of crazy. I need you to be organized and color coded and and um, perfectly uh, set in the way that you should go so that I can trust that you are a perfectly sane and normal Christian and then I can move on. But what God showed me is that he was just trying to draw out of me um, moving from normal into super where he started taking away some of those comforts for me. He started saying, Erica, what if Instead of waking up and writing in your journal, what if you don't write at all? What if you literally just sat there and listened to me talk to you? And I thought, oh, I don't know about that. That seems a little uncomfortable. And then he, after I got used to that, he would change my location. And he'd say, why don't you pray outside on your back porch? Okay, God, we'll try it. So he was constantly in a very sweet way trying to get me out of this little box that I had put our relationship in so that I could become um, more deeply immersed in who he was and who he was didn't look exactly the way that I had always thought. Mm, yeah, we like to, you know, it's God's really safe if we know what he wants exactly, how to do things. You know, we're so bent in our own natural thinking and ways, just this religious kind of you know, so many things we've adopted into our Christianity really isn't relational. It's more religious. It's more tradition. It's more routine. And it makes us feel good. It makes us feel like I'm doing something. You know, it's got this false sense of like security attached to it. But the Lord loves to break our boxes and draw us in. And I call it, you know, divine dissatisfaction. It's like a term that I that I that I call it because there, there comes a point where you hear enough stories about healings or you hear enough people saying they hear from God and you're like, well, that's something that's missing in my life. You may be weird. It may sound strange, but 
you, you have fruit in your life. You have joy in your life. So you kind of come to a place where you're like, oh, you're just like not content to be where you are. You're just hungry for more. And I think that's what really begins to really begins to draw us out of that life of just kind of, you know, American Christianity into a biblical form of Christianity where you just begin to hunger for more. And like you said in your book, you were saying how, you know, you, you did hear from God. You, you did walk with the Lord. You were involved in church and you were a servant and all these things, but there was more for you. Yeah, and I think that was made uh, most apparent by exactly what you said. Reading the New Testament, I started digging into stories of those faithful people that walked with Jesus. And I thought, why doesn't my life look like their life? There has to be more to my faith than just this. There has to be deeper levels. There has to be more um, excitement and joy and revelation and miracles and all of these things that I had labeled as crazy. God started saying, what if they're not crazy? What if that's really what faith is and you're missing mm -hmm. out? And that's what really prodded my heart to start this journey of how do I meet God where he is rather than asking him to come to me. Yeah, that's really good. I love how merciful and how kind he is that literally for, for a while he speaks your language. He comes into our he comes into our boxes and he comes into our system. He kind of submits and yields to it just to reach our hearts. And then he, he, you know, he comes in to draw us out. But it's amazing how kind and how merciful he is, you know, in his dealings with us like he doesn't tell us we're lacking or we're no good, he doesn't condemn us and point his finger at us. What he does actually is he shows you the delicacies. You know, he shows you all the blessings that are available. He says, see, see this table here? It's, it's full. Yeah. Everything is provided for. This is available to you. Do you want it? All who are hungry, come. All who are thirsty, come. Like that's, that's the goodness of our God. You know, that's his heart. That's his nature. So that, that's very apparent in your book. You know, as I was reading through it, like the, just the goodness of God that draws us to this deeper lifestyle. And you're right. What do we do about all these miracle stories in the Bible? Is that just for the super apostles or is that just for, is that for everybody? Can we right. take it? And yeah. you have to be able to self-reflect on that and say, where's my part? Am I, am I submitting to God the way that you want me to submit? Um, or is it that just right now in this season, you have me walking a different path? Because I can tell you that there have been seasons where I've seen God work miracle after miracle, answered radical prayer after radical prayer. And then there have been seasons of what feels like quiet. Mm -hmm. And what he's told me in those moments is that those are times of rest and drawing close to him. And he's not always going to be the loud booming voice. Sometimes he's the whisperer like he was for Elijah when he was hiding in the mountain. He says, come on, come closer. I need you to hear my voice. I need you to come be with me because all the big stuff has been amazing and incredible, but I'm a multifaceted God. So I'm not only going to speak to you in the big, but also in the small. I love that scripture. I often preach from that scripture because I just love it so much. We're looking for him in the cloud and he comes in the cloud. We're looking for him in the fire and he comes in the fire, but he was, he, he came in that still small voice and Elijah had to press in and just listen and get quiet. I just, I love that. And for those who are just tuning in right now, this is Awaken Live. This is Erica Willis. We're talking about her book, Believe Boldly. Feel free to share this at the bottom. Feel free to comment. Let us know where you're watching from. Hearts, likes, all that good stuff. We love to hear from you and all of that. And if you could, you know, if there's any kind of disruption in the broadcast with the audio or the video, please let us know. We want to make sure you're hearing this and seeing this just, just fine. But so, so Erica, you know, God began to show you through these people that were weird to you for a period of time. Like there is more, you can hear his voice. You know, you, you were looking through the new Testament and you're realizing this is not just for the, the people back then. This is for us now. So how did he draw you out of just a normal American Christian walk? into the deep things. I know there was like aspects of prayer and even a movement that came out of it. So tell us a bit about it. Yeah. So what this really manifested as in my life was uh, prayer. So like I said, I had a method for hearing from God, uh, the way that I liked for him to speak to me, the way I like to ask questions. And of course I would listen, but I'm only specifically listening for an answer to the question that I asked. I'm not a wide open God speak to me about whatever. So as I was searching for this uh, deeper connection with him, I started to um, get on my face uh, in prayer early in the morning. And this was really because of the example that my husband set, where he had a full-time schedule, craziness uh, of working a full-time job, going to school full-time to finish his degree, um, helping plant a new church in Kansas City, 
Um, and on top of that, being a dad and a husband. And his pastor at the time challenged him to get up early and pray before his day had ever started. And they would just text each other a, a good morning, hello, to keep each other accountable. And then they would spend their hour in prayer and go about their day. Um, but I had seen such a shift in my husband. What I thought would be um, a punishment for me as a wife, thinking, how are you going to last a whole day long with all the commitments you already have? And now you're getting an hour less sleep. What happened was it completely changed the way he spoke to us, the way that he led our family, the way that he interacted um, with those around him in faith. And I was like, it was almost um, those experiences where you say, I need some Jesus and I don't have Jesus yet. It's almost like that conversion experience where you say, he's got something that I don't have and I want it. So um, I got up early and started praying. I was not happy about it. I was not like throwing a party to get up at five in the morning and pray. I had uh, little kids at the you time. Were doing, you were doing somersaults and dancing around the house pretty much? Don't we all? Like we <laughs> celebrate, we set off fireworks. Yay, we get to talk with God super early in the morning. <laughs> and so I was like thinking, this is the dumbest idea. I'm not going to survive this. Um, but what I found in those moments is that God met me where I was and he um, opened up my world in such a radical way that our story continued to go and he moved us into Texas for, for future ministry. And I just shared on the blog my story about how I had gotten up at five in the morning uh, and we did it for five days of the week for five weeks. It's almost like a little prayer boot camp. And when I shared that story, I had a good friend that reached out to me and she said, I want what you have. Do you mind if we keep each other accountable? And I thought, well, sure, I hadn't really thought about it, but that would that'd be great. I know a few other people who might want to join us. Let's just get a little text thread going. And um, there are nine of us the first time. And from that, um, those five weeks spurred those girls to share with their friends who shared with their friends and so on and so forth. And it grew completely organically, was never the intention of my heart for this to ever be a ministry. It really was a personal discipline for me. Um, and now we are um, this last session that we just had of the fives. Um, it was 725 strong. It's in every time zone in the U.S. It's overseas um, and it's been in several different countries, depending on the session. Awesome. Um, and it's just incredible to see how we've added, like I said, men now, they saw their wives and the change that happened in their wives. And they said, okay, we need groups now. So we kind of scrambled as a ministry and said, how do we, how are we ministering to men? Are we going to start groups for them? What do we do? So everyone just is kept accountable on their phones via technology. So it's done right from the comfort of their own home. And then they share the revelations that God gave them um, in their little conversation thread. So it's pretty incredible to watch. Yeah. Yeah. So just explain. I know you I know you touched on it, but explain what exactly is the fives and how could people even get involved in that? Yeah, absolutely. So we uh, right now, our next session will be in October uh, and it's on our website, believeboldly.com. There's a fives tab there that you can find out more information, but also sign up um, when signups become available, which will be later this fall. Um, but what you do is we um, as a team behind the scenes collect all of the signups and then we uh, separate you into groups based on location, based on your home church. If, uh, this last session, we had an entire church that participated as a part of their um, spiritual growth. Um, yeah. So we separate you depending on how you request. And then you're put into a group me conversation. So the group me app has been great for us. Um, mm -hmm. And in those conversations, you'll have about eight to 10 people. You have someone who's in charge of your group that gives you content every single morning. Mm -hmm. um, but more importantly than that is they call you if you don't wake up. So if you are not up by 5 a.m., they will text you, they will call you, they will bug you until you get your booty out of bed so that you mm -hmm. can have some time with Jesus. So it's really cool and the accountability piece. And then you, you silence your phone. Um, and then for the whole hour, you spend time with God as he leaves. And then you check back in after and say, hey, here's what God said. Here's what he showed me. Here's a song that spoke to me during my prayer time. Here's a verse that jumped out at me. Um, and after those five weeks, uh, what we find is that people are begging for it to keep going. <laughs> so it really is something we don't have to twist anyone's arm to be a part of it. They are begging to be a part of it with us. Yeah. And, and this is this is biblical. This is very, very biblical. You see it in the life of Jesus. And he's the he's the glory of God. He's the perfect representation of the Father and, and, and the ways of the Father. So, you know, Jesus often pulled aside to pray and to be with his daddy. Sometimes he didn't sleep at night at all. You know, you're just talking about waking up at five. Sometimes he didn't sleep at all because he was so enraptured and so undone in the presence of his father. And the Lord is speaking with him and he was having these like, you know, you know, amazing moments with his God. So this is like, this is, this is very, very biblical. And even, you know, some people try to take it and they say, oh, wasn't that legalistic or something? Like I got to do this every single day. That's not the heart. That's not the heart behind this movement. You're not trying to earn anything from God. You're not striving in any sense of the word. You're, literally discipline's a good thing. Number one, our mind, and we need to discipline our minds and our bodies. The apostle Paul spoke about that. That wasn't legalism. That was passion. And so 
But at the same time, you're just setting yourselves up for an encounter with the Lord. What what better way to start your day than face to face with your father, than hearing him, than being in his presence? Of course, it's going to set the course of your day in a completely different direction. Attitude, the, the way you are with people, just like your husband. Yeah, it was pretty incredible to watch. We talk about it as being a tithe, a first fruits of your time and of your day, because it is the first thing that you do when you when you wake up. And the way that we see the fruit and that is exactly what you said, is that we saw Jesus do this. So if we create the space for him to show up, then he'll be able to show up. Otherwise, if we kind of piecemeal it throughout our day, we're going to miss maybe some big things he has to say to us simply because we don't have the bandwidth to take in the world around us as well as hear his voice clearly. So what I found being a mom of littles at home is that they weren't awake yet <laughs> to be asking for 20,000 things. So it was easier for me to shut out the world and mm. only hear the Lord's voice. Mm. Yeah, that's really good. I know I, I got one baby and another one on the way. So I, I know what it's like to, you know, my wife, especially because I get to be out of the house more than her, but you know, so this is something I, I always say too, because I feel like there's certain people in the church, they're, you know, big prayer movement and they're all about, you know, secret place prayer, but they don't really understand the concept of abiding and receiving throughout the day and how everything could be a prayer unto the Lord. And then you have the people that are getting the revelation of, man, I just, you know, I just, I got connection all day with God. And then they're, they're neglecting the secret place. But I think every, everything that we believe about God needs to make sense within a relational context. So my, my wife and I, Jesus, our husband, we're the bride, right? So my wife and I, if I could get to know her more, I could fellowship with her, you know, spend time with her, get to know her among a whole bunch of other people doing some tasks. That's good. We need to learn how to fellowship that way. But at the same time, there's nothing like having a date night, putting your kids to sleep. You know what I mean? There's, there's nothing like that one-on-one -on -one time and every marriage needs that. And I feel like it's the same exact thing with our relationship with the Lord. Absolutely. And you've got to make that time intentional. Otherwise, we as uh, parents know it doesn't happen. <laughs> you have to carve that space out. You have to get a babysitter. Or you have to put them to bed early or you make those plans ahead of time. Because if you don't, you'll find quickly that that dissipates and you go, oh, I used to know you uh, mm -hmm. of 10 years. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So you you have a, a, you know, a chapter in your book. It's called Baby Steps, right? I think it's called Baby Steps. And you Correct. talk about Ezekiel 47. And this is something really near and close to my heart because God keeps showing me, he showed me a vision of the ocean and he was saying how I was only splashing in the shallow end. This happened when I first got saved and he was beckoning me deeper. And he keeps reminding me of this vision. I shared in my book, Immersed in His Glory. When I preach in several pl places, I talk about it because so many Christians were, were ankle deep or were just knee deep, but God's calling us to fully immerse ourselves in his presence, number one, but also in his plans and purposes for our life. So you talk a little bit about Ezekiel. How did the Lord speak to you through that scripture? And just tell us your heart a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty incredible how he talks about we have this vision of the temple and this river flowing from the temple. And there's a man standing by and he's talking to Ezekiel and he's saying, I need you to measure the depth of this water. And what I love about it is he doesn't say, let me just list off these qualifications for you because they've done that before with the temple, right? Visions of how they're to build the temple. He said, measure it by this long, make it this wide. Uh, and he doesn't say that. He says, get in the water, feel the water rushing between your toes, around your ankles, around your waist, so that you can experience this movement of water. And we know that the Holy Spirit is likened to water often in the Bible. And so we see this embodiment of what it feels like to walk with the Spirit. So to me, those toes in the water kind of moments are like, ooh, is the water going to be cold? What's under this water? What does the sand feel like? There's a lot of these like almost um, baby moments of revelation. Like if you've ever taken an infant out and put them on, on, on grass for the first time, just their reaction to like, what is this texture and what does this do? And can I eat it? And all these things that bubble up just inside a baby, you think about that in our walk with God, when we start walking with the Holy Spirit and we start listening to him and yielding to him. And um, when God tells us to take a couple of risks here and there, where we feel is very risky, which is not risky for him at all. <laughs> we start stepping into this water. And then as we get more comfortable and our skin adapts, to the temperature and it's not as scary to us anymore he says how about a little bit deeper and how about a little bit deeper and and what I love is that you get to the point where you've made it up in your mind if I go any further I'm certainly gonna drown right so for me in the beginning as a normal that would have been walking up like I said to someone in Walmart and hearing a word from God or hearing go pray for them and I think all of us have experienced those moments those of us that walk with the Holy Spirit in any amount of um, 
uh, depth at all. It's kind of like, go share your testimony with that person and your heart starts beating and you're sweating and you think, surely God, I'm going to die, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the moments that he's saying when Ezekiel's in the water, he gets up to chest deep and he feels as if he's going to drown because the water is flowing so intensely. And what I love about it is that the man that's telling him all these descriptions doesn't say, well, that's ridiculous. I can't believe you feel that way. Might as well get out of the water. He says, okay, great. Come with me. Come out back to the bank. I want to remind you as to why I had you standing in the water in the first place. So there, like you mentioned earlier, there's no condemnation. Mm. Whatever level you are in the river is glorifying to God. He doesn't care if it's your, if your pinky toe is in the water mm-hmm. or if you're waist deep or if you're chest deep or if you were just uh, completely immersed. He's yeah. just excited to have that community with you. So for me to have that put in tangible words and a, a tangible example for a normal, for me, it gave me comfort. Like, okay, God, I see it in the Bible right there in black and white. I don't have to question that piece. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. And, you know, so when God began to draw you, you know, in prayer, so you're spending time in prayer, you're being enriched in your prayer life. You're hearing the voice of God like never before all that, you know, the Lord must have started, you know, besides this prayer movement, which is amazing. I'm so happy about the fives. That's great. Someone commented at the bottom, Taylor Weatherly said, I love hashtag the fives. Yeah. Which is so cool. So, you know, a movement, this is obviously the Lord, the Holy Spirit began to breathe on this. So there was like a movement that took place. But how did that translate into your life? Like what he started asking you to take some some more risks? Was it financial? Was it because this is something I'm going to interject this real fast. This is something that the Lord spoke to me just the other day. And I don't know if I said this on Awaken Live last time, but it's just so strong in my heart. It's just that like people want to see big results. They want to live an extraordinary life, but they're not taking you know, extraordinary steps, you know, they're living very ordinarily taking minimal risks, but they're expecting God to sovereignly just drop things on their lap, you know? So, you know, uh, the the Christian life is a life of faith, a life of taking risks, and then we get to see the miraculous. So how did the Lord kind of draw you into a different lifestyle? Yeah. Um, he did it sweetly and he did it slowly for me. Um, and I feel like For me, it was really great to test each thing that came at me. So um, when I would feel the urge to donate money specifically to something, I would do that. And then I would pray and say, God, show me, was that your voice? Did I really hear you? Because I needed to know if I need to know this is God's voice. If I don't know it's his voice, then I will not follow through. So I've got to know for sure, which is where that prayer piece helped so much because I was used to hearing his voice for an hour every single morning. So um, one time he had us give away a vehicle to someone. And uh, the great thing about it is that he spoke it to my heart and then my husband just said it out loud, you know, two seconds later. And I thought, Oh my goodness, there we go. Like that quick confirmation was incredible. So since being faithful in that area, we've received vehicles. We've given away more vehicles. I things that people look at me and say, how, how would you ever do that? How did you trust that? How did you go down to one car? How did you know that God was going to provide it? Well, I didn't, (laughs) I just knew that he said to do it. So it's becoming less concerned with the outcome and more concerned with the step of obedience that he's calling you to, no matter what the outcome is in the end, knowing that he is a faithful and true God. So whether he asks you to pray over someone in Walmart and they completely reject you, or whether he asks you to give away a vehicle and you receive a vehicle in return months later, I mean, he works in so many different ways. We just have to start um, letting that seep into the practicality of our lives, uh, whether that be trusting our kids with him. Um, He has me step out on a limb all the time uh, with people in public, which is really scary sometimes. And I find myself backing off of it sometimes because I'll go through such a season of hearing words for people in public or praying for them. And then after a while, I'm like, okay, can I just go to Walmart and not hear anything? (laughs) Can I I just be a normal for like five minutes? That would be great. And he's gracious and of course lets me take little breaks and then he'll ask me again, do do you want to see something amazing happen again? Do you want to see another miracle? Do you want to be a part of this? And every time I leap at the chance. Not too long ago, it was about two and a half years ago. Well, first of all, thank you for sharing that. That's so good. I want to actually add to that a little bit with, with my own experience, but just a couple of years ago, and I get shared tons of stories and I have on Awaken Live before of just like taking a risk and stuff like that. But my wife and I, you know, I was working a good job. We just had our baby. God called us back to the U.S. from living as missionaries. And I had a certain amount of money saved and God encountered me, spoke to me, and he told me to quit my job. Just had a baby trying to get a home. He told me to quit my job and to just launch out in full time ministry. And that was so dumb according to the natural mind it just did not make sense according to where we're going and what we're believing for and so we did it right and my wife is so encouraging like she was the one that said do it if god said it do it like if it wasn't for my wife i wouldn't have did it probably 
So just being honest, you know, we, 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 we can be honest, right? You know, we're not perfect. Yeah. So I would have been like, oh my God, I was overwhelmed. But we had a certain amount of money. And when I first quit my job, God told me, give this amount to the church. And I was like, are you kidding me? That's kind of like our nest for a little while until money starts coming in. And honestly, I didn't listen right away. I didn't listen right away. I put it off and I didn't tell my wife about it. And I thought, oh, next week, next week, next week never came, right? So God didn't talk to me about it again until that's all we had left in our savings account. The exact number. Yes. He didn't bring it up again. He didn't mention it again until that's all I had left. And then I was like, you win. You win. I don't know. I don't know. And then I, I mentioned it to my wife and she goes, yeah, God told me that like three months ago, but I figured I'd let you hear first and then we'd kind of come together or whatever. And I was like, are you kidding me? So we took it. It was an even bigger faith leap now because we had zero in our savings account. But anyways, but then God came through. The, our tax return came back like ridiculous, more than we even, way more than we even gave. Just God came through. We've never lacked anything. And it's just, you see the miraculous hand of God. And this is something, Erica, maybe you could pray into briefly before we get into the talk a little more. I feel like there's marriages and people are not in sync. Mm -hmm. like, like you said that you and your husband heard at the same time. Me and my wife have been learning to hear at the same time. Can you say something or, or pray into that for a minute? I think there's marriages that are watching that they're, they're struggling. Yeah, God, we just pray right now that you'd make your presence known here among these people that are anyone that listens to this now or later, God, that they can feel your presence um, and, and speak the hope, God, that they have. Uh, in their marriage, God, that you restore all things. There is never one thing, God, that you cannot fix, that you cannot redeem, that you cannot restore. And when we believe and pray in faith that you will bring passion in our marriage, that you will bring trust back into our marriage, that you will bring financial security to our marriage, God, we trust that you will pull through the way that you say you will, God, because we stand on solid ground, a solid foundation. We don't have to worry about whether this will happen or that will happen, God. It says that you clothe the flowers of the field. Why do we ever have to worry, God, if you care so much about the little birds of the air and the flowers on the ground. God, you care so much about our marriages. And I feel like at times people feel um, so focused on the problem at hand that they feel hopeless, God. So we just pray for a mighty move, an infusion, God, of hope uh, in Jesus' name, that it will just saturate each of us from the top of our head down to the toes of our feet, God, that we will walk in this hope that is you, God, that your living word will come alive in us and speak truth to us about how you restore and redeem all things that Jesus' death on a cross uh, happen so that we could be cured of all things, God, whether that be adultery or addiction to pornography or hopelessness or depression or suicidal thoughts, God, all of those things can be completely redeemed and realigned under the Holy Spirit and the power of the cross. So we thank you that we are never without hope, God, but I pray that today you would speak a special word of encouragement to each person here that's married that is wondering is there anything left, God? Is there anything more I can give to this marriage who would like to quit at any time, God? We pray that in Jesus' name, today will be a fresh start for them. Amen. Amen. I just feel so strongly in my heart to say, you are not powerless. Yeah. And just like Erica said, you are not hopeless. Yeah. The hope of the world lives on the inside of you. He's closer than the air that you breathe. He is never distant. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. You might not see him in the season. There might be a lot of stuff clouding your mind. It may be blurring your vision, but he is there. He is there and he's drawing you to himself and he's, he's imparting faith into your heart. Keep believing, keep trusting, walk on the word. You are more than an overcomer in Jesus Christ. Start speaking the opposite. Your thoughts have been telling you, I'm powerless. I'm defeated. I'm never going to get over this. This is a constant struggle. I'm always going to do this. This is, this is the devil has been lying to you. You've been believing those lies. Change your inner dialogue. Change the things that you're saying over yourself. You are powerful. The spirit of God lives on the inside of you. You are anointed. You are free because when the sun sets free, it's free indeed. So I just speak that over you in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Thank you, Erica, for that. And yeah. This is something I know you talk about in your book. For those who just tuned in, we're talking about her book, Believe Boldly, The Power of Simple, Confident Prayer to Unleash the Supernatural. But I know you also talk about receiving your prayer language or um, you know, tongues. You talk about that in your book. How did you first, because this is something explosive for our prayer life. We're talking about prayer. So tell us a little bit about how you received 
Yeah, well, first I had to get over my misconceived notions about what a prayer language was, what speaking in tongues was. Um, I grew up very conservative uh, in my faith, um, accepted Jesus right before high school. So um, anything that I'd encountered in faith had been uh, matching my type A personality, right? So um, anything I heard of, because let me tell you, I never witnessed it ever once in my life. But what I heard from other people or those in faith was that people that pray in a prayer language or speak in tongues are making up things and quite possibly doing it because they would like some attention um, and they want to seem really holy or really special. So they'll speak in this language that they just babble out. And so I never dug into it. I just thought, oh yeah, that's a dead thing um, that never happened ever again. And that was real easy to get over. And um, when God said, that's not what I am telling you in my word, what do you see in the Bible? Why don't you actually, Erica, dig into my word and see what it says? Why don't you start asking people that have a prayer language to share their experiences with you? Why don't you do some research rather than sitting back in judgment and deciding what you believe about it? Um, and so I uh, was very vocal um, in my disbelief of this gift and uh, would invite my friends that had a prayer language to speak to me. And I would like give them horrible looks the whole time. Like, so you just like hear something and then you say it, you know, I was really gracious and loving. And, <laughs> and every time they would share their story, it was, it shocked me every time, every time it caught me off guard that this is nothing like I thought it was nothing at all. And I, as I searched the scripture and I searched examples uh, in the Bible of people praying in a prayer language, um, it, it started to settle a little bit more, a little bit more, but I wasn't um, fully accepting it until um, one day God woke me up in the middle of the night, like midnight and said, come pray with me in the living room mm. for obedience steps in. Right. Because I could say no or I can get out of my cozy bed and say, OK, God, what do you want to say to me? Um, and I sat in my living room all by myself. And um, as I was praying, he said, do you want a prayer language? And I said, you know what? I don't know what this is all about. I, I haven't even landed on a solid answer yet. God, I don't I don't know how to explain this but if you want it for me and it's real then i want it anything you have for me i want it and from there it just flowed because i'd finally released um control over what i felt that would be and um and again it shocked me because i could start it i could stop it um it was something that i had never experienced before but um it got it grew larger and my vocabulary uh, expanded and all of these things happened um and what i found is sometimes i would pray in that prayer language and uh be sobbing and not have a clue what I was praying about. And so it was just more evidence for me that, man, I God is using this in a very powerful way. Yes. Yeah, that's that's so true. Speaking in tongues has been has been huge in my life. Um, and I know a lot of people who struggle with it. You know, for some reason, I, I got saved from drug addiction. I really wasn't. Um, uh, I was kind of, you know, I, 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 went to, I grew up in Catholic church, but I didn't have a whole lot of um life experience and like Pentecostalism. So when I got saved, it was the presence of God, you know, it was a dramatic, you know, encounter. So it wasn't just like a progressive thing where I was slowly, it was like, literally I was a drug addict and then I was a Jesus addict. Like I just wanted more. So when my, when I, my parents told me like, it's a gift, speaking in tongues is a gift and it's for every believer. Just like imagine a gift on Christmas, like, like go in your room and imagine God just giving you a gift and just take it by faith and just start speaking by faith is what my parents told me. And I didn't, I wasn't indoctrinated, you know? So I just kind of went in my room, I got on my knees and I said, if it's mine, I take it in Jesus name. And I just started speaking in tongues. And at first I, it was like my mom's prayer language that, that I heard growing up. Like, wow. shut down, shut down, shut down. it was the same thing my mom said. So the devil was trying to get, he was like, oh, you're just a parrot. It was your mom's yep. language. It's not real. You're, you sound like Pick a fool. <laughs> my parents told me that we're, that we're, um, you, number one, you edify your spirit. You're, you're speaking mysteries that you're praying the perfect will of God. So I, I, I knew the scriptures because my parents told me the scripture. I just kept doing it every day by faith. And then it took about a week and a half, maybe two weeks. And then it started to pour out of me things I've never heard before, you know, but I just yielded my heart. I said, God, I want it. Lord, mm -hmm. I just, I want it. And I just started by faith speaking. I didn't wait for him to grab my tongue, but I feel like even people who are watching right now, I feel like some people have been disillusioned. Number one, they've been discouraged because they've, they've wanted it. They've sought it, but they haven't spoken in tongues yet. And I feel like there's other people like you. You kind of grew up in a church where it was like, well, that passed away. And, and you were around people that say, you know, it's not for today or it's demonic or those people are religious or or whatever else that may be. And I think a lot of that is cloaked in disappointment as yeah. well. Yeah, good word. People people like because genuinely people sought it, but then they they didn't experience it for whatever reason. So then they. They, they grabbed hold of a doctrine that said it's not for today to justify themselves, make themselves feel better or whatever else. I've seen that as I've, as I've ministered to people. 
when you, when you get to the core heart of the, of the matter, that it really is disappointment and discouragement and doubt. But so what would you say if there's people that have discouragement, maybe they've been pressing in for a while, but they've never spoken in tongues. How could they prepare their hearts or how can they just receive this gift? Yeah, I think that's, like you said, a common struggle with people. I've, I've heard from many times from women in ministry, well, I've asked and I've asked and I've asked and nothing has happened and nothing has um, ever manifested in any way. I've had people pray over me. I've spent time in prayer and um, we have to trust the sovereignty and the timing of God. I truly believe for me, when God gave me that prayer language, it was because it opened the door to a million different things that I was ready to receive. And speaking in tongues was like the linchpin that was holding, like if, if I can get Erica to surrender this piece, then I can give this to her and she will see, she will have evidence of the spirit in her life. And she'll say, okay, what else do you have? What else do you have? Because it really was the thing that opened the floodgate. What I noticed um, during those prayers is I would start to have visions uh, yeah. during my prayer for understanding of what I was praying. I saw that I could lay hands on people. And when my prayer language rose up, um, we would pray for healing and that person will be healed. I mean, crazy, incredible stuff happened. Um, but I was open to it and I was patient for it to come in God's time. And let me tell you, if he tried to give me that prayer language, even six months prior, it would not have happened. So sometimes he's working and tilling the ground of your heart. And sometimes it's just a timing issue. And he says, I have a purpose for this to be given to you at a certain time. And I need you to trust me in that timing. Mm. Yeah, and it doesn't look the same for everybody. It's just going to yeah. look different for everyone who's watching. It's not going to be my story. It's not going to be your story. Right. Like my father, he was hungry for it. He heard about it, and he didn't receive it right away. I think it was like a week or two later, he was actually taking a shower, and he got out of the shower, and he just got hit. It was like, whoa, like he just like felt the presence of the Lord, and he almost fell backward. He didn't, thank God, but he was like, whoa. And then he just started speaking in tongues, and he actually fell to his knees and started crying because of the overwhelming presence of the Lord. Yeah. So that's that's not my story. That's not my story. That's not your story. That's his story. And so we all have a different story. And like you said, I think the most important thing is just yielding your heart, being okay with whatever it looks like, saying like, God, if this is something you want to bring into my life, which it is, you know, the apostle Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all. He, he, he spoke about the importance of tongues. Like you said, it's explosive. It, it unleashed power into your life. So he wants all of us to have that kind of power. But um, anyway, so I just encourage those who are watching right now, if you've been discouraged, just shake it off. If you got to even just do this, just yeah. get all that disappointment, get all that discouragement off. Today is a new day. The mercies of the Lord are fresh every single morning. What's past is behind you. So now is now. Okay. So uh, even yeah, I just feel led to do this, Erica. Let's just pray in Jesus name for those who are watching. You can even just, Lord, I'm just going to go into prayer and Erica. As you feel led, you can pray as well. It doesn't even have to be about this specific thing, whatever you feel led. But Lord, in Jesus' name, those who are watching right now who have never received a prayer language, I just pray in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, come upon them, fill them right now in Jesus' name. The promise of the Father. If you ask for a stone, if you ask, I mean, if you ask for bread, if you ask for a fish, he's not going to give you a stone. He's not going to give you a scorpion. So you just ask him. He gives the spirit freely to those who ask. So in Jesus' name, just mm -hmm. say, Daddy, and even everybody watching, if, if this is you receiving, say, Daddy. I receive the I receive your promise. I receive the Holy Spirit and just receive by faith. It doesn't matter if you have tingles, if you feel something or you feel nothing, just receive completely by faith. Completely by faith. I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then some of you just need to speak. Just speak. Just speak. I loose your lips right now in Jesus' name. No fear. There's no fear. No one's around you. Maybe your kids are around you. I don't know. Maybe people are around you, but just speak. In Jesus' mighty name. I just feel, even just for a few more seconds to do this. It doesn't need to sound like my tongue. It could just be one syllable. That's fine. Just release what's in your belly. Release what's behind your tongue right now that just wants to come out. It just wants to jump out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And there's some of you, maybe you just spoke in tongues right now. Praise God. Just praise your father. Just praise him. Thank him. Worship him. He's so good. But if you didn't speak in tongues right now, that's okay. You received by faith. And I believe I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. I believe even before I, it was like wild. I was encountering God even before I had my prayer language. So, but I just believe at the right time, like Erica said, just be open. Keep your heart open. Don't let the devil lie to you and deceive you. Just keep your heart open and it will come. It will come. So, Erica, whatever you feel led, just bless the people, pray for them, and then we'll, we'll talk more about your book and how people can get it. 
Yeah, God, we want to just seal the work that was done. God, what a mighty move you just did. This man is bold. Michael is bold. God, I thank you for his boldness. I thank you for the way that he hears your voice and uh, leads people to your throne in a very unique and special way, God. And I pray that everyone that participated in that prayer, God, that we would seal, that you would seal that good work that you've just done, God. Um, and we thank you so much for the way that you're already restoring languages. You're already restoring marriages. You're restoring faith in the supernatural things, God, that you have an open door policy for anyone, God. You never close your door on the gifts. You come to us and say, would you like, would you like this gift? How can I help you? How can I equip you to call out your, to work out your purpose here on earth, God? So we pray and thank you that you keep that door open, that you keep beckoning us closer to you, God, that you speak sweetly to us, that you never force us into the deep end, God, but you are gentlemen and you are so sweet with our hearts and you know us deeper and more intimately than anyone else could know, God. So you will speak to us the way that we need to be spoken to. You will beckon us the way we need to be beckoned, God, and you will um, cradle us in times when we're scared and we want to quit, God. So we thank you that you are all things to each of us, that we never have to question your love or your purpose for our lives, but that we can fully trust you, God, no matter what stage we are in our faith, whether normal, whether a super, whether we are toes in the water or in over our heads, God, we know that you always have more for us. So we thank you that you are a good father who loves us deeply. Jesus, name amen yeah i just feel in my heart that some of you are like there's someone crying i don't know who you are i feel like you're 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 a woman or you're a young girl even i feel like maybe youth young adult age and you're crying because you're just receiving so much right now from the holy spirit i just want to let you know it's okay to cry it's okay to be emotional it's okay to be weird according to some people that say oh you're just being super spiritual oh you're just one of those types you always want to talk about jesus no they're weird they're weird for not loving Jesus with everything and for not being free. That's weird in the kingdom. Don't let people lie to you. This is all, this is abnormal. No, you're normal from God's perspective, from his, his vantage point. You're, you're a free daughter. He loves you. And everyone who's watching in Jesus name, just receive and be hungry for the more. And who cares what anybody thinks, you know, just keep moving forward and, you know, and God will bring the right people into your life. People that love you, cheer you on and all of that good stuff, who celebrate you for who you are and your obedience, your radical obedience to Jesus. But anyways, amen. I feel like the Lord just poured out powerfully. You got me jabbed up. This is good. <laughs> See, it doesn't matter. There's no separation of the spirit. You know, like you're you're in Texas. I'm in New Jersey. But, you know, people are watching from all over and they're being ministered to. But I'm I'm encouraged by your book. And I'm going to get show people if they haven't seen it yet. Believe boldly the power of simple, confident prayer to unleash the supernatural. So. Um, I have your website at the bottom, believeboldly.com, and right there in the status section is actually the link, so people can click it and just go right there. But how else can people get in touch with you in your ministry? Yeah, you can follow on all social media at Believe Boldly, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We have accounts, uh, and then follow along with the blog, believeboldly.com. Um, we actually just came off a season of a sabbatical right after the book launch, so um, we're gearing right back up to that this next week. So um, join our mailing list and our newsletter, and uh, stay connected. We always have cool stories to share from people who've been praying in the fives. Amen. So can they get your book at believeboldly.com? They can believe boldly.com or you can go online. Any of the major retailers, Barnes and Noble, target.com, Amazon, uh, available, all those wonderful places. I've seen it in bookstores too. I've seen it in Barnes and Noble. I've seen it in Barnes and Noble and bookstores. So, and if you go to a Barnes and Noble and it's not there for some reason, it probably is. But if not, you can just ask them and they'll order it for you or whatever online. Sure. It's Kindle and all that good stuff as well for an ebook. Yeah, we have, we have it um, on audio as well at Christian audio. Christian audio. Awesome. That's good to know. Pop it in your ear, drive. Yeah. You just listen to it. So anyway, thank you, Erica, for taking time out of your busy yeah. schedule to be with me on Awaken Live. I just pray over you in Jesus name that God will continue to grow and expand your ministry and that you would have grace upon grace to do everything that he puts into your hands, that you do it with peace. You do it with joy and with excellence in Jesus name. And God's just doing, I just see even right now, just fruitfulness. Wow. I just see fruitfulness all over you. There's just like fruit springing up all over you, like so much that you can't even contain it. You know, like the promised land, they came back with like huge grapes and they needed like super heavy guys, like yeah. super heavy guys that carry it. You know, like I just feel like that kind of grape, that, 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 that kind of fruitfulness is happening in your life where you're, you have this amazing team. You need other people to help carry it and you have a team, but that God would just send you faithful, integrous people in Jesus name. Anyway, so just bless you and thank you so much. That was spot on. <laughs> <laughs> Good. good, good. Well, thank you for joining. I'm just going to do a couple announcements. I'm going to get off, but I'll talk to you soon, Erica. Bless you. Thanks. Okay. 
All right, everyone, thank you so much. This is Awaken Live. I'm so glad you tuned in. Um, I know you guys are blessed by the show, encouraged by the word that was released. So you can share this at the bottom. That helps get this out to more people all over the world, which is an awesome thing. It's a great thing. You can also go to her website there. Erica's website is believeboldly.com. But also in the status section is our website, my wife, Selena, and I. It's www.lifepouredoutintl.org. You can get a copy of my book, Immersed in His Glory, there. Not This book's not only about experiencing God, but abiding in his presence. You have that kind of access 24-7. In the secret place and every place, you can stay connected with the heart of your God. So really go into a lot of things there. But anyways, bless you guys. Go on our website. We have an Awaken Live. We have archives on there, so you can watch them all in one spot. There's a YouTube channel now where all these videos are going up on the YouTube channel. Not just Awaken Live, but teachings, interviews I do for Immersed and for our ministry, all the evangelistic work and things that we do. So bless you guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week on Awaken Live.